All right, all right, I'll do it. Woo! Over the last 24 hours, I've received a lot of messages of people saying they really liked watching the pro players compete in two versus two in yesterday's video. So I figured today, uh, let us have a look at a couple more games. Now, I just loaded up this replay. It's from the same tournament that I casted that game of yesterday. However, spawning right here in the bottom left hand corner of Nightscape, playing with the pink Protoss probes. We have none other than Maru. Maru is a rank one player from South Korea. This man is ridiculously good. Best Terran player in the world with a significant margin. However, apparently he's playing Protoss in this 2v2. Anyways, his ally right here playing with the red Terran SCVs. He goes by the name of Ri Young. That's probably the reason, by the way. I guess they didn't want to go Terran Terran. So Mr. Maru decides to play a little bit of Protoss. Anyways, their opponents in the top right. Playing first off here with the blue Protoss pieces. We have Astrea. And as you may have already noticed yesterday, his teammate is Scarlet. All right, so Scarlet and Estrella facing off against Maru and Ri Young. I'm hyped for this. I'm actually really excited to see so many of you are excited to watch some two versus two as well, because it is just a very different dynamic. And yeah, it's it's exciting to see, right? I mean, obviously, I love watching and casting top level StarCraft two when it comes to the one versus one, and that will always be the basis of you know StarCraft. But it's fun to see the pro players participate in. Something that's a little bit different, right? And something that is, yeah, not maybe their comfort zone either. Especially like the free-for-alls and the battle royales that we saw some time ago. I always like watching these guys play in, uh, yeah, a bit of a, a different setting. Anyways, let's see. So, Ryung is gonna go for the command center. I think we'll probably see a similar thing as we saw in yesterday's cast. Where, yeah, he did decide to go for a, a couple of barracks first. So, not as fast of a command center, but we'll probably see this command center flying on over here towards that low ground to go for the golden minerals here rather early. Now, what exactly is Maru going to do? Actually, uh, fun story, you may not be aware of this. Maru is apparently one of the very best Protoss players in the world. So I just looked it up. Sadly, currently he's not ranked with Protoss on the Korean server, but his Zerk is currently at about 6k MMR on the Korean uh, StarCraft 2 ladder which would make him right around top 25 on the Korean ladder with his Zerk. And from what I understand, his Protoss is significantly better. So if, you know, his Zerk is top 25 on the Korean server right now, his Protoss is better than that. He, he must be, he must be, yeah, like a, probably a top 10 Protoss player in the world. I wouldn't be surprised if he puts in a little bit of work. Turns out top level players are really good. Serral actually recently mentioned that in an interview as well, that apparently he's currently playing his off races a lot both Terran as well as Protoss, which, you know, I'm here for it, man. If we could have, like, a, a best of five series of Maru versus Serral, both of them playing off races, that would be fantastic. Anyway, let's see what exactly will we have in this game. Apparently, this one's really good, by the way. This particular game right here on Nightscape is supposed to be the best game from that tournament that the Olimo League put out. Again, if you're interested in supporting them, I'll go ahead and post a link to their Patreon page down below in the description of this video. Anyways, what exactly do we have? Maru going for a proxy gateway on the right side of the map. Fair enough. In the meantime, Ryang is mostly just opting for some of that marine production. Not a huge fan of the marine production, but maybe I'm mistaken. This though explains why Maru is going for that proxy gate, as he now planted down a dark shrine inside of his own, well, his shared main base. In the meantime, what exactly is Astraea up to? Astraea going for his beloved Phoenixes. Double Stargate Phoenix, actually. So that is certainly going to be a useful unit. But are they going to have any detection? What exactly is Scarlet doing up to this point? Scarlet has gone for the Baneling Nest, okay? Lair is going to finish up very soon, and this Lair is going to be important. Mostly because then, you know, she can actually <laughs> warp in a couple... Ooh, hallucinated Oracle here. I actually love that from Maru. Did she see? Yeah, she did see. Okay, that's important. Yes, no, now now she could actually prepare here in advance with that Overseer. That Dark Shrine should have been a little further back, Maru. Probably should have been, I don't know, right over here so the Zerklings couldn't just run up the ramp. Anyways, maybe they can still get some sort of damage in, though. No, I think she's actually good. Yeah, I think she's fine. Okay, one Dark Templar running over there. Couple of drone kills, maybe. But that's about it. Okay. In the meantime, Astraea has gone for the Fleet Beacon. When we're going for this many Phoenixes, though, I believe, yeah, it's for the Anion Pulse Crystals. That is an upgrade we don't see all too often in 1 versus 1, but it's fantastic in StarCraft 2 team games. 
This gives you, uh, I think it's plus two range on the Phoenixes. I mean, they're played every once in a while as well in uh, in 1v1, especially when Protoss is going up against like Mass Muta or something like that, but it doesn't happen all too frequently. Anyways, it basically makes the Phoenixes, when they pick up units, right, they can fire at a significantly longer range, and it's really difficult for the opponents to actually, yeah, fight them properly. But of course, they're still Phoenixes. The main problem you run into is that while they are fantastic, they're not very good when it comes to like straight up winning the game. They're really good at like harassing and picking off some of the heavy hitters and all that, but they can't really close a game all by themselves. Yeah, he's going plus one flyer attacks too. So Australia is going mass Phoenix here. In the meantime, by the way, Mr. Maru happily expanding all over the map. Did go for the Dark Templar. Apparently uh, still warping into me, regardless of the fact that they've already been countered. That gateway on the right side of the map never got spotted either, so Scarlet actually, she's now building another hatchery. Expanding completely vertical. She might find that hatchery, or, or sorry, that, uh... Okay, that, uh, warp-in pylon right over here in just a moment. Okay, quite a bit of harassment already, though. Yeah, Phoenix is a rod of tanky units, they're not bad. Okay, so now we have a transition towards carriers. Scarlet in the meantime, forcing the council on one of those opposed Nexi. That was Maru going for a double expand though, so maybe a little bit greedy. Plus one, plus one upgrades coming up here as well. For the uh, South Korean Terran player. Hey, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so basically the way that Australia plays two versus two apparently is very reminiscent of how literally every single Protoss player <laughs> I've ever seen in team games uh, play this game. It's uh, Stargate units all the way. Now, Maru is mixing it up a little bit, but I actually do think what Australia do uh, is doing here is, is rather clever. Just try and lean onto the Zork player here for a little while to build up that ultimate army. And Going straight towards the Skytals is pretty good. Very, very powerful. So one thing we saw um, Scarlet do in yesterday's cast was focus on mass Nidus Worm. So four Niduses all at once and just transporting units all around the map. I think that's probably what Scarlet and Astraea are once again aiming for in this particular game too. So mass Nidus Worm and then probably a Mothership to use a Recall and then, you know, the Mothership's Recall as well. So you can use the Recall on the Nexus as well as on the Mama Ship to, yeah, go all around the map. A lot of mobility is possible, but it takes a little while to get there and... They're not going to be able to just tech straight towards those units, I don't think so. We see quite a bit of harassment already. Star uh, Scarlet right now uh, picking up the pace as well as she, well, assuming anyways. She's going to. Uh, she'll probably load a bunch of Zerklings into this Dropper Lord to then drop it into the opponent's base. Phoenix is still harassing. Massive uh, Stasis Ward over here. We saw that Oracle putting it down earlier. Massive Stasis Ward over here. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Missile Turret guy actually helping out the Nexus. Anyways, slowing down that attack here from Ryung quite a bit. Ryung, by the way, focusing primarily on Marine Mine Medevac. Pretty strong unit composition, but I'm not 100% sold on it. Gateway on the right side of the map was found. Maybe I'm mistaken, but it seems to... Ooh, okay, it's actually not Zorkling drops, it's Bingling drops instead. It seems to me that the majority of the time we see a 2 versus 2 or team games in general, it all comes down to those ultimate late game armies. But you can obviously do a, a sick timing attack right here with these Marines as well. These are well upgraded Marines. In the meantime, by the way, the drop alert. Okay, it's heading in towards the Golden Minerals. Is there enough? Okay. Oh, nice. I think that was Maru pinging, actually. <laughs> Maru pinging for Ryung to move his units. Not bad in the end. Almost a disaster, but crisis averted for now. Ryung, of course, was looking at his main army here. Alright, so Maru and Ryung are now making themselves up for a pretty big attack over here at the front. These are all relatively low tier units, but already Astraea has arrived at his ultimate tech. Maybe not double Cybercore research just yet, but Astraea is definitely going for a whole lot of carrier production. Okay, ooh, that's a good storm. Very nice storms right here. Maru controlling his units properly. Forced to morph in Archons. Losing a couple of them right there on the back of that fight. In the meantime, it looks like Scarlet just wants to go straight for the counterattack, but I do believe that reinforcements here from the players in the bottom left 
should be able to take care of those units relatively easily. Okay. I'm surprised that Ryang is actually just sort of camping out here in the middle of the map. Yeah, it's it's a little too slow, right? Even Maru decided to return all the way back home. Now suddenly, though, this Terran army is completely unprotected. Is there enough for the Terran player to actually hold on? We don't mind stealing a lot of friendly fire, but certainly also killing those Zerklings. Now the carriers are showing up, though, and Ryang is all by himself. All by him. So, okay, it's a little too early for that. In the meantime, Astrea apparently took a cheeky little nexus right up here. Maru found it, though, and he's going to be able to take care of that. But I wonder if Maru shouldn't have been out there in the middle of the map helping out his ally. Yeah, this is the thing about StarCraft players. I find this with my, with my own games as well. I feel like I'm pretty good at playing one versus one. But I am not a very good teammate. <laughs> like, I am just not that great at communicating to my ally what exactly I'm trying to get done. You know, like, if you play a lot of one versus one, you don't practice the mindset of being a team player, right? It's an entirely different skill set that you don't practice if you focus exclusively on 1v1. So that was, at least in my mind, a bit of a disconnect, where Young is sort of sitting there in the middle of the map. Maru went all the way back home to clean that Zerkling run by up, and then suddenly, uh, yeah, Ryang was all by himself against a Zerk player who's obviously capable of getting a lot of damage in when the Protoss joins forces as well. Anyhow, um, Ultralis Cavern coming up here for Scarlet. Pathogen Glens also coming up. Okay, so she's going for... A different late game composition than we saw yesterday. Honestly, Skytos with Ultraling Bane is a terrifying unit composition, and you don't really need Nidus Worms on those super fast moving Zerg units. Scarlet once again harassing wherever she can, dealing a bunch of damage, ready to blow up some more of those workers, I believe. Cloaked Zerklings. The most horrifying thing I've ever seen. Okay. Now Tempest are coming up for Maru. So Maru is going 3 3 upgrades here, triple forge. And he's going Mass Carrier. So those Carriers are gonna be- or sorry, uh, Mass Tempest. So those Tempests are gonna be really good against the Carriers. I believe that's primarily why they are being made right now. Okay. Team North America still, still though, feeling pretty comfortable. There's the Mass Recall! Oh my god, suddenly the entire Protoss fleet appears inside of the bases here of the players in the bottom left. In the meantime, Zerklings running all the way towards the other side of the map to snipe those Zealots, but the Zealots have already done what they came for. Still the biological units here. Yeah, you know what? I wasn't entirely keen on the mass marine production here earlier, but when it comes to dealing with just the Interceptors, they're going to be able to make short work of those. And Tempest now picking off the heavy hitters. Maybe Marine Tempest is the way to go. Just a little bit scared for when those Infestors and Ultras really properly hit the battlefield together with especially Banelings and all that. It's just moments away from being a disaster. There's a lot of utility, of course, in this army over here. I mean, you could throw a time warp on the marines. <laughs> that would slow down their movement speed. And then the bailings could connect easy peasy, right? Not normally something we see in StarCraft 2, but... I've got a feeling that... The marines can just accidentally die very easily. Alright, so ghosts are coming up. I think that's the right choice. Ghost Thor definitely makes a lot of sense. Australia continuously researching as well. Double Robo facility, triple Robo facility actually. Robo Bay also coming up, so probably a transition right now towards Disruptors. Anyways, here's that battle once again. Tempest now, okay. Able to shoot at maximum range. Is there enough, however, for Team South Korea here to clean all of this up? I'm not 100% convinced. Okay, now those Interceptors, yeah, they're once again fighting Marines, and that's not really where you want to have them. But then again, Australia and Scarlet have already cleaned up the job that they came for. Here's the Infestors. Okay. Very careful. You saw Mar <laughs> Maru is splitting a little bit sooner here than Ryug is. He was already reacting with his Tempest. Anyways. Okay. So, essentially, I would say 55, 60-ish percent of the map right now, maybe even more, is taken here by Team North America. They're slowly driving the opponents into the corner in the bottom left. That being said, Maru is going to continuously expend. Here's the Mothership once again. Mothership with the offensive recall. 
A little bit dangerous. There's not that much of an army here available for Team South Korea just yet. Mothership actually just got sniped by the Tempest. Look at the circling movement on the minimap in the meantime. Okay, there's the recall back home. Basically what Estrella does, this is a classic one-two punch, right? Estrella is baiting that entire army from the opponents towards the bottom left. And in the meantime, Scarlet is engaging in the top left. Those probes are in a lot of trouble. Okay. Interceptors though, in a bit of an awkward spot as well. Fungal growth together with... <laughs> oh my god. Fungal growth into Disruptor Purification Nova. Not something we see all too often, but Maru and Ryung are plummeting in supply. My god. Incredibly chaotic, but... I'm liking this position here for Team North America more and more. Yeah, they're playing together as a team, right? Like, they actually have a strategic idea. I, I feel like, I don't know, at least in the games that we've seen so far, don't get me wrong, Maru and Ryung still have a chance to win this game, but... Scarlet and Estrella seem to be playing together like a team. They have a... Yeah, a, a plan. Whereas, Maru and Ryung seem to just be building up stuff, and they're making units. And maybe those units can eventually win the game, because, you know... They're one good engagement away from winning, but... It doesn't seem as well oiled here. Stray and Scarlet working together like a machine. Actually, I, I've casted quite a few of Maru's games back in the day of him playing like Battle Royales and Free For Alls and all that. He's super good in those game modes, so I actually kind of expected him to be really good in 2v2s as well. Ooh, failings. Oh, those Disruptors absolutely murdering that Marine Clump. Ryung losing a huge chunk of his units. Carriers, though, mostly out of interceptors right now. Yeah, Stalker's blinking underneath as well, just trying to get rid of whatever they can. Neural Parasites going down, Storms are landing left, right, and center. I believe the Disruptors, yeah, are gonna have a Purification Nova available once again. Those Thors have just changed sites, so it is a little bit creative. <laughs> Pickups right there as well by Ryung to try and snatch those units on the retreat. Oh, before the Purification Novas could blow up everything. And you know what? Maru and Ryung have held. Yeah, they're actually gonna start moving after some of those retreating units as well. But they're gonna be forced to go home. In the meantime, a couple of water balloons here being thrown at, I believe, a couple of Zerklings. Whew, okay. Yeah, those fungal growths have been fantastic. There's not a lot of energy. Actually, there's no energy anymore on those units. So that's exactly what Ryang is hunting for right now. Okay, getting a couple of disruptors instead, not bad. Now the Ultralisk's paint train has arrived, though. Yeah, six Ultras all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Storms are landing on all of those units. Estrella forced to back off with his own Tempest right now. Mothership throwing up the time warp, but GG has already been called as Scarlet and Estrella obtain another victory. All right. Our next game is on the map Fields of Death. And right away, Ryung and Maru are sending out workers out onto the map. Okay, I thought for a second we were splitting up proxies. Yeah, judging by that, since we didn't see any pinks or, you know, something like that appear on the minimap, I think that these players are indeed in voice comps. So that's nice. Anyways, this is a 2 versus 2 map that features a shared ramp. So there are these, like, back bases, right? These pocket expansions, that's quite nice. But there's a one ramp over here that Scarlet and Estrella are gonna have to concern themselves with. They can share that defense, but obviously that can be both a blessing as well as a curse. Okay, so Ryang sending two SCVs. Maru going for a bunch of proxy gateways. And this is why 2v2 in StarCraft is incredibly difficult to actually play, because this is, if you're, if you're solo queuing, right, or if you're just, like, queuing on the lower end of the ladder, or, well, pretty much anywhere on the ladder, um, you'll have a lot of games that look exactly like this, where it's just proxies, it's just cheese, literally all day, every day. As a matter of fact, by the time you're watching this, and as I'm casting this, there's a hundred people kind of rushing, right, in two versus two, literally right now. Uh, there's a lot of cheese happening. And it's, it's difficult to hold, because... Well, like we, you know, we just talked about, or I had a monologue about. Um, it's, it's, yeah, that that team aspect, right? That communication, that's quite difficult to actually do properly, especially when you have a game like StarCraft Two. Ooh, Australia almost sees it. Anyways, where every unit deals about a gajillion damage is what I'm getting at. So, 
You do have time to react, but only a very small amount. Now, this is a bit of a disaster. Scarlet just went for double expansion over here. Um, Astrea went for a very, very fast Nexus as well. But they don't know what's happening. This is the first time they will see what it is they're actually facing off against. A little cheese spray was put right next to that pylon. Okay. Can you put zealots in bunkers? <laughs> don't know why you would want to do it. Maybe you can save them, but can you? I actually don't know. Anyway, um... Yeah, there's no units available for either Scarlet or Astrea. I mean, there's an Adept coming out right now. That pylon, by the way, is the only thing that powers anything over here. So that little nuke over here is not bad either, right? That Adept is completely stuck. Those Reapers are just getting work done as well. And yeah, this is, this is a disaster. Now the additional reinforcements for Team South Korea are showing up as well. This is what I'm talking about. We need a... Uh, a concise strategy for 2v2 as well. StarCraft is, of course, a strategy game. Just playing the macro game and not really having oh, much of a plan on the back of it. Not quite ideal. Anyway, Zerklings are out right now as well for Scarlet. But I don't really see what she's going to be able to do. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Um, Astrea is super dead, right? Astrea has no money. No money, no problems. Maybe not always the case, huh? Uh, Speedlings are going to finish in about half a minute. That spine crawler here from Scarlet can certainly help out as well, but... Uh... Yeah, no. Yeah, just, just no. 20 links are just about to pop, but it's just not enough. GG. Okay, so let's see. Can Zealots go into bunkers? No. No, 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 no. They, they cannot. They cannot. Alright, one more? Let's do one more. The map is Reclamation, and it looks like Team South Korea has spawned in the top left hand corner. Their opponents in the bottom right. Scarlet right here, playing in blue. And Australia. With the light blue, teal, cyan, whatever you want to call this, collars. Um, are we going to go for a pylon at home? Or not at all? No, I don't think so. I don't think we are going to go for a pylon at home. Okay. So, Reclamation is a bit of a funky map. Even though he sent that worker really quick. It's still arriving rather late, because now Estrella is supply blocked. Anyways, um, Reclamation is a bit of a funky map, so... You don't share a main base. There's like a ramp leading down over here, but you do share like a natural ramp. However, if you're Maru right here, you only really worry about, usually you take this as your base, right? And then you only really worry about this ramp, but there's one over here. Now, luckily, Astrea is apparently covering off that second entrance into the main. So that's, that's kind of nice. I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to work out. So Scarlet has decided to go for a pretty quick spawning pool and extractor too. So Team North America has decided to just play a very cheesy match. Maru scouting around, sees the lack of hatcheries. Sees the lack of literally anything. Well, other than a gas geyser and one pylon, but the, yeah, the timing of that pylon is already a little bit fishy. Eventually a hatch does come up, but that timing is very clear. So Maru immediately plots down a forge. He actually just... Maru just walled himself in fully. Maru, this is a team game, mate. You can't just... <laughs> Maru's saying, this sounds like a massive you problem, Ryung. Maybe, if you tried a little harder, this wouldn't be so much of a problem. Um, now, I guess Terrans can fly their structures. So that's nice. But... Hmm. Yeah, so Maru, you're gonna be fine. Congratulations. I guess he wants to defend by helping out with Stargate units. But there's definitely a little bit of a disconnect, though, because by the time that those Stargate units are out... I mean, he still has a probe over here, so maybe he could build cannons and... I don't know. Anyways, by the time that those Stargate units are out, is it not already a little too late? Maybe I'm misjudging this. Actually, Astrea is gonna go... for Maru's wall over here. Yeah, there's already a bunker up on the high ground. Briang not coming for the rescue just yet. I guess they don't need it. 
No, this is totally fine. Oh, you know what? I thought it was a bit of a selfish approach, but uh, I believe they've just helped pretty smoothly. Yeah, not really running into a whole lot of problems. We're young even going for a comment center already. That seems a little bit greedy, but... Yeah, stalkers are coming up. Astrea has been shut down pretty easily here. Scarlet, she's already made that expansion, of course, so we now see that hatchery. Some of the drones are already returning minerals, so that's quite nice. Now, careful, don't put down too many uh, creep tumors. One Hellion. Trying its very best to just shoot down whatever it can, okay. So even though that gateway was being worked on some time ago by the Protoss player, now the other Protoss player finished off the work. He desperately wanted to keep it alive, and now he destroyed it himself. Classic. Uh, that Nexus, though, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, is it? It shouldn't. By the way, um, what exactly... Yeah, okay, what exactly came out of that, uh, that Stargate? I just remembered there's indeed an Oracle, so that's gonna force the recall now. Okay, so the Stalkers are coming back home. Maru, once again, with some good decision-making. Nine workers, plus... He just alleviated that pressure on his natural as well. Pretty sick play. Ryan going for the blue flame upgrade right now, okay. Yeah, you know what, it makes sense. If the opponent mostly has stalkers and zerklings, or sorry, zealots and zerklings. Sounds pretty good. Okay, so now these gateways are spotted as well, so I think that's probably all you really need to know. There's really no way that Estrella is going to be able to keep these alive for the foreseeable future, right? I don't think so. Okay, it's a little bit dangerous. Those flames take a while. Scarlet has been making a ton of units herself as well, so... Now there's a group of Binglings coming up. This is spotted by Maru. That siege tank over there is fantastic. Stasis wards also coming up on the high ground. Yeah, they are a little bit concerned. I've got a feeling, though, that Team North America here is not going to be able to achieve too much with this aggression. I mean, they believe otherwise. Because they have committed to a ton of army. But Scarlet now making a couple drones again. Australia going back to making probes too. Now with those gateways shut down, this is working against Team North America here, right? Because what exactly... They're not going to be able to set up surround, so they basically have to go up this ramp over here, and there's no way you're going to push into that. Okay. So, where are we exactly at right now, worker-wise? So, 46, 31 probes, 39, 36. So, it's actually pretty playable. Yeah, it's these oracles that are putting in a lot of work. Surprisingly annoying to have to deal with those units here. Amaru now going into Void Ray production. I've never seen a more terrifying thing in my life. Maru playing with Void Rays. Ay -ay -ay. Blue Flame is done. And that makes those Hellions all the while more lethal. They're not even terrible against Stalkers. Okay, they're kind of terrible. But Timing of the Lair is spotted here too, so that's all you really need to know right now. If Zork is going for a lair, it basically means that they're not gonna attack. Right? Like, they can go for an attack later on, but for the next couple minutes, unless, you know, you leave your depots down or something like that, or you move the zealot out of the wall, Zork is likely not going to push. And because of that, Ryang and Maru can do whatever they like. And apparently what Maru currently likes is Void Rays. Void Rays and plus one flyer attacks. Alright. In the meantime, Ryang going from, from Blue Flame Hellion right now into Cyclones. Even going into... I think the armor upgrade is probably better, no? But anyways, he even decides to now go into the armory research for mechanical units, too. Okay, good amount of damage being done. Poor Astrea is being bullied in this game. That's what you get for planting your gateways on the other side of the map. I absolutely love that these gateways are still just here. Yeah, they'll probably get cleaned up eventually, but... The alternative would be Ryang uh, walling himself off there and, you know... It's already been done for him. The wall has already been built. Ryang built a wall and made his opponent pay for- Wait, no, he didn't build- Anyways, any, anyway, anyways. There's the Robo Bay coming up. Disruptors, of course, very popular. Maru has been relentless, though, with the amount of uh, harassment, yeah. So Scarlet is now at 80 drones. 
And Estrella is barely at two base saturation. This is a little bit dicey, but of course Scarlet can always send her ally a bunch of those resources that she's mining as well. Maru now going into the fleet beacon. Additional factory production coming up for her young. Okay. So we're tacking up. We're tacking up. Yeah, I don't actually see a notification or anything like that pop up whenever players are sending resources. But judging off of the fact that uh, Scarlet here has 85 workers, but not a lot of money or a lot of supply. Well, I mean, she has a lot of money now, but I think she maybe has been sending some resources to Estrella. Because she should definitely be closer to like 160 or so. Anyway. Ooh, look at that. Whoa, I've never even seen those map decorations before. I think that's from the Overmind. Anyways, uh, I'm sorry. That is sick, though. If there's a map maker watching this, we need to have more tentacles in the dead space. That's what... <laughs> I call for more tentacles. Anyways. Scarlet going into her spellcasters. Fantastic. Disruptor's coming up here for Estrella. So Estrella is slowly taking up. Losing quite a chunk of army there on the right side of the map while I was shouting about tentacles. So, we have Ryung playing a full mech-based army, which I do think is probably a little bit better than a bio-based ball. Bio-based ball? Hey, that's a... Bio-based ball. That's a fun, fun word. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this is full siege tank, full mechanical, cyclone, helion, the whole shebang. I actually thought he was going to stick around on cyclones for a little bit longer, but... It's mostly siege tank production right now, so that explains the upgrade decision here to go for the attack upgrades first. Anyways, this little harassment squad right here from the South Koreans is pretty strong. Now suddenly Maru appears. Lasers! Laser! Is what he's currently shouting at his monitor. Lasers! Fungal growth, but still lasers! Recall. Nice. That's what I think anyways that Protoss players usually are shouting at their computers. Am I wrong? Yo, Protoss players, whenever you go in with the Void Ray run by like that, right? Or the flyby, do you shout lasers at your monitor? I think you should. If you aren't already, you definitely should. It'll feel nice. Anyways, that tentacle dead space in the bottom left hand corner is so massive that those units just showed up completely unscouted. There are, however, a lot of infestors. Yeah, 12 fungals available. That is a lot. There's more coming on the back of this, too. New Lair is going to start up. Neural Parasite is going to be the next order of business here for Scarlet. Fair enough. Okay. So, Ryung and Maru giving the opponents quite a chance, though, to get back into this. Somehow those stasis wards. <laughs> They're circling running over all over the place, but somehow they did not get, uh, get triggered. Here go the lasers! Here we go, here we go, here we go. You ready? Shout it with me! Uh, fungal! Fun fungal! F fun oh, okay. Never mind, never mind, never mind. No lasers, no lasers. Bit dangerous. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of fungal, okay. This is, uh, that's an army. That is an army. Mara going Skytals. Just full Skytals. In the meantime, Ryung is going full ghost mech with a raven support. Even getting a couple of infantry upgrades right here just for the ghosts. Again, I feel like armor upgrades here are better, but maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. Actually, I do know. I'm pretty sure armor upgrades is better. <laughs> what do I know about StarCraft 2? Okay. Yeah, so they're basically just going all around the map. So... I'm surprised with the passivity right here, though, from Ryung and Maru, because they were in a really good spot, but I still think they're in a really good spot. But, you know, the margin for error in a 2v2 is tiny, and just a little bit of miscommunication can accidentally lose you the game. Fungal. <laughs> so they've given Estrella and Scarlet a lot of time to get back into this match. And I think they're back now, right? Yeah, so... Estrella going for his own Skytel's army. Scarlet now going for her Ultralisk Cavern, plus two, plus two upgrades. 
Viper and Fester. I mean, to be fair, it is really difficult to push into these sort of armies as well, right? When there's that many Infestors out. If controlled properly, they're super difficult to break. <laughs> that was an attempt. Okay, here we go. Ryung and Maru are making them up or themselves up for an attack. Cloaked siege tanks. I've never seen a more terrifying thing. Fungal abduction in one, two. Okay, no, never mind. Or I meant mothership abduction. Anyways, minus 400, minus 400, coming up very soon, I believe. It has to be right because there's vipers out. Okay, that is a spread and a half on those siege tanks there. Tempest though having a grand old time. There's the mothership, but it's gonna stay alive. Already though, a lot of damage is being done right here by Maru, who is leaving his teammates' units. Mostly unprotected, but the Tempest have been forced around. Okay, so that's one hatchery down the drain. Zerklings once again going for a counterattack. Fair enough. Wouldn't mind seeing them go into this army right over here instead. Disruptors have to be very careful. Those are Astraeas. Yeah, most of them just get sniped. Another hatchery goes down. Viper. No, no parasitic bomb instead. I thought there was going to be an abduction. One of the Tempest, or Carriers, does go down. Okay, now there's Banelings available too, and... Yeah, Maru knows that this expansion is no longer, uh... Gotta stay alive, but... Oh, nice way to mine detonation there too. That was a split, but the wrong unit gets split off from the pack. And that was a tough loss. That was a tough loss right there for Astrea and Scarlet. Scarlet still has a lot of minerals in the bank, but not a lot of gas. She's now going double Spire, probably to try and deal with those flyers here from uh, from Maru, but... Of course, there's a lot of ghosts on the ground already as well, and this is a super scary army. Like, just the potential here is ridiculous. We could even add nukes into the mix as well, maybe a couple disruptors on the side of Maru, maybe a couple High Templar. That might make it even better, but... Blue Flame? Yeah, Blue Flame's pretty good, huh? Yep, nicely done. Aesthetic Defense planted down first because there was a pesky little Zerkling burrowed in that base's location. And the armor missile, softening up a lot of those units. Okay, nice purification, Nova. Another hatchery, though, ends up going down here. And Scarlet and Astraea are pushed into a corner. Might be about time uh, Astraea to start returning the favor to Scarlet. Because she is lacking a lot of gas and you're maxed out. Or close to it, anyways. Never count out a Zerk, though, when they have this many Infestors. 29 Infestors?! Okay, that's a little, a little much. She now has enough Infestors to quite literally neural the entire Terran army. That's one way of doing it. Ultralisk coming up, Chitinous Plating, 3-3 three, three upgrades. Greater Spire. Scarlet is spending money in this game like she's a billionaire. Like she won't run out of resources. Spoiler alert, she's already mostly run out. I mean, yeah, we have six and a half thousand gas, but... None of those late-game upgrades... Beautiful EMP. None of those late-game upgrades are particularly useful if you can't make the units that cost a lot of gas to go with it. Alright. Beautiful game so far, by the way, by Ryung and Maru, right? Like, even though I am a little concerned for their decision-making, they're playing it out really, really well so far. Like, even though there's definitely a little bit of risk involved, they've done a good job. Slowly advancing. EMPs once again, softening up a lot of that army. Fungal growth, okay. This is still a super scary force, though. Uh, really terrifying. If those Ultralisks can jump on top of the Siege Tank somehow and join by the Zorklings, I mean, there's a lot of potential there, okay. Nice snipe. I think that's Hellions. Okay, a couple of Hellbats being annoying, but... Reinforcing Stalkers here of Astraea will be able to make short work of that. Another Fungal Growth. A lot of this army is being softened up a lot. Here come the Neural Parasites, I believe. Yeah, they're hunting for it right now. A couple of the units do indeed end up changing sight. 
Dempus now joining it as well. Ultralisks are rushing through this army as well. Ryung and Maru were in a wonderful position, but maybe this is the beginning of a comeback here. Jeez. The fights are difficult to read, right? Because there is so much action going on everywhere. I wouldn't mind seeing Scarlet reinforces with a gajillion Zorklings, but she doesn't have any larva. That's a big problem. Yeah, only three larva available because they just popped off. So she's got 5,000 minerals, but nothing to really spend it on here. Okay, those stores are also dealing a lot of damage. They actually have a ton of supplemental input here. You don't quite realize it, but every time they fire, backs a punch. They have a lot of range these days. Okay. Ryung and Maru, by the way, took this expansion over here. When well, you think about it, right? If you actually look at the minimap right now, yeah. A really healthy chunk of the map has been taken by Team South Korea. One Ultralisk derps out because the <laughs> Siege Tanks and Thors are cloaked. I've got a feeling that Ryung and Maru are indeed playing this out really well. Yeah, the margin for error is tiny. And they could have certainly made critical errors. But so far, they have not. They made an advantage for themselves in the early game after the opponents, well, cheesed them, right? And they have been trying to build on that advantage for the entire game long. That being said, could this maybe be the engagement? No, I don't think so. Astrea just does not have enough units. GG is cold. And because of that, it's Ryang and Maru who obtain the victory. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button. It really does help the channel out. And other than that, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I hope to see you once again tomorrow for another video.